What's up, Foot Clan? It is mock draft time. What strategy did I use? What strategy did Jason use? Did he draft Kyle Pitts in the second round? I don't know. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Hey, Foot Clan, there has never been a better time to become a programmer. And with Code Academy, you can learn to code on your own terms. I can tell you from personal experience, learning to code as a young man was one of the best decisions I ever made. Yes. Uh, it set me up for a future career and all the different things that I was able to do. And uh, simply put, Code Academy is the best way to learn to code online. They not only teach you job ready coding skills, but they also help you build unique projects for your portfolio, earn certificates, and even prep for technical interviews. Uh, like I said, I mean, I've, I've gotten in there with Code Academy. My son, who's about to turn 13, he's gotten in there. He's so excited to learn HTML, CSS, SQL, some of these skills that will set him up for the future. And um, it'll help you get qualified for in-demand jobs. And they can do it in as little as two months. Join the millions of people learning to code with Codecademy and see where coding can take you. Get 15% off your Codecademy Pro membership when you go to Codecademy.com and use the promo code BALLERS. That's promo code BALLERS at Codecademy.com to get 15% off Codecademy Pro, the best way to learn to code. That is C-O-D-E-C-A-D-E-M-Y dot com, promo code BALLERS. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, June 15th, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. A mock draft episode on the way. mock a lock a ding dong yo <laughs> And we are going head-to-head-to-head, to head to head, as they say. Mano, e mano, e mano, e mano, e Jason. <laughs> I, look, <laughs> I know so that I've got the number two pick. So I am pretty stoked about getting Christian McCaffrey. I think he's going to fall. I think he's going to fall to me. We'll see what yeah, happens. We'll, see. we'll be doing that shortly. We've got some news to get into, a quick question. But always excited to face off against you two fine gentlemen in a mock draft. A chance to experiment a little bit, see where the ADP is uh, shaping up to be, what it's shaping up to be. What was the uh, iron sharpens iron? That sharpens is. iron. Yeah. I, uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, this will be a great show. Looking forward to it. Obviously, I'll have the best team, but I'm looking forward to seeing which one of you two come in second, you know, by public opinion. We randomized the draft order, um, and I was sad to see we're all pretty near each other, which just means it's going to be frustrating. It's going to be like, I, I, I want to take advantage of a computer instead of be sniped by you two jerks. And I know that's gonna that's gonna, but it's it's just gonna make it more realistic. Yeah, Jason's at two, and then um, Mike is at four, and I'm at five. So we're all at the top half of the draft, mm. and uh, Mike will snipe me on the way through, and I'll try to snipe him on the way back, just like good friends do. Very excited for number four. Yeah, yeah. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the mock draft, we'll have the draft board up. You'll be able to see it as it progresses. You can subscribe, click the bell over there if you want to be notified of new episodes and things we're doing on YouTube. You can check out the community at jointhefoot.com and the UDKs at uh, ultimatedraftkit.com. Get yourself ready for the upcoming drafts. And I do mean upcoming. I mean, we are middle of June. This is our second mock draft episode, I believe. And training camp, preseason, right around the corner. This is time for your training camp. That's right. Your fantasy training camp. You're talking to them, not me, right? Both. Okay. I mean, you're right. <laughs> Quick question of the day. This one comes from Felix in Austria. The cat? No. No, oh. this one's from Austria. Oh, bonjour. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, Felix. What's Damian Harris's ceiling? Patriots running back. Last year in limited work, which was 137 carries, he was impressive. Five a carry. Five games as a top 24 running back in 10 games played. They drafted Ramondre 
Stevenson later in the draft. Mm -hmm. Still have Sonny Michelle on the roster. Rex Burkhead's been cut. James White is still there. So I'll just say my opinion really quickly and get out of the way. I think it's an RB2. I think that's the ceiling. So you think he can hit into the top 24? I think he could finish in the top 24. Okay. I think he, he could be consistent enough, um, have enough touchdowns to where he ends up as a, an RB2. That's not the same thing as a, proje a projection. That is a ceiling for Damian Harris. Um, I am not going to – I'm not going to predict amazing things for post-Brady you know, sure. Patriots until I see them. Yeah, you're 100% right to, to do that. I mean, you – I've been frustrated, you know, through the draft season. They're all oh, Bill Belichick's never drafted a, hasn't drafted a first round quarterback in twenty years. It's like, but you, well, yeah, that you, you had Tom Brady, so like yeah, it didn't work for Green Bay. People will say, talk well, about who is he? Green. Bay. People will talk about uh, over the last six years, the the Patriots have scored double digit rushing touchdowns inside the five yard line every single year. It's like, uh, okay, but that doesn't matter anymore. Because Tom Brady's not there. The the touchdown upside isn't there. So I, I agree with you, Andy, that like running back twenty is like his ceiling if it if touchdown just so happened to come his way. I know a lot of people are really high on Damian Harris as as a breakout or a sleeper potential running back. He is good. He he yeah. looks like he is a quality running back, but when you combine the fact that you don't expect a a massive uptick in touchdown opportunity and he's not a pass catcher. So this he's is, this he's, is JK Dobbins on a bad team, potentially. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've got, you know, Chubb and Derrick Henry who don't catch passes, but they are on the most prolific rushing attacks in the league. And then you've got Damian Harris, who's kind of on a middle of the pack offense, who's going to be splitting more time than either of those other guys and doesn't catch the ball. So I'm not like I he's one of those guys that I don't think I've drafted him in a single mock draft. I just don't really care. Even though I, I see that he is going to be the starter and have volume, it's just the upside isn't there to me. Yeah, I, I don't mind drafting him. For his, for his ADP, I think that he will be a serviceable player. But to me, the, the ceiling is maybe he sneaks inside the top 30. Uh, I guess maybe he can make it to that RB2 range. Uh, just It would take a lot of touchdowns, and you have – the Cam Newton effect, where when you're inside the five, like Cam Newton's going to be the one who 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 shakes off the play call and he takes it in himself. And then what is the other option? Okay, well now we go to Mac Jones. Now we go to a rookie, unproven quarterback. And how how well is the offense going to do if it's when it's Mac Jones leading the thing? And you have a very specialized pass catcher. It's not just that Damian Harris can't do those things. It's that there is a player who is James White is one of the best pass catching running backs of the of, of in recent history, and they're going to use him like that. So there's a lot of things against Damian. And he would have to he would have to play so incredibly well and overcome things for for, for fantasy purposes that uh, his ceiling to me isn't very high. But having said that, again, I still think he is worth a shot at the end of a draft just to see how things shake out because maybe. It's it's Uncle Bill. He's he's a bit of a wild card sometimes, and and revamping his offense, completely doing a one eighty from year to year. It will depend on where he goes in drafts, right? right. I mean, like right now becomes, he's in the ninth round. He's oh, the running he? back thirty two. Yeah, see, and, I, and I when don't I look, mind that. see when I look at that, I'm like, okay, I'm drafting him as the RB thirty two. I'm talking about his ceiling being like running back twenty four. So it's like. Maybe I'll finish a little bit better than where I'm squeaking that's, out. That's, that's his, valuable, though. That's, that's his valuable overall at running back. It's I mean, a, so, sorry, that that's his overall ceiling. But on a week to week basis, on a running back you could draft in the ninth round that you will have at least some level of confidence to start. I mean, most running backs are going in the ninth round are guys that are their insurance running backs. They're someone who definitely has a starter in front of them. So uh, that that's why I'm still good with him on a week to week situation. Yeah, I mean, 32 is the last starting running back of football based on that, right? So That's correct. Math checks out. All right, news time. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Cam Newton will be a full go during Patriots minicamp after the hand injury. No break, and he'll be playing. So Whew. you need him out there so he can lose the job. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you want Mac to have to take it, not just be given this job. 
Uh, the Jets renegotiated the contract with 40 year I mean, 27 year old Jamison Crowder. It's crazy. He's 27. That that does seem really surprising. He's just been solid. He's been a veteran since his rookie year. That's how it's <laughs> felt. You know, like he's a five year vet when he came into the league, and he's he's a quality real world NFL wide receiver. I, I don't know that it's he's going to matter that much with what this team is doing and the other people that they brought in. It helps um, Zach Wilson more than sure. your fantasy team just to have a reliable pass catcher in the middle of the field. But he's back for 2021. All right, there was a, you know, I don't, is this hype train? Yeah, oh, for sure, this is hype train. Yeah. Uh, the Denver Post, Ryan O'Halloran, believes second-round rookie running back, Javante Williams, will start for the Broncos in week one. Week one. His quote was, you don't trade up for a sec, uh, in the second round for that position without having him earmarked to be your main guy. This is his opinion, but it's his informed opinion as a team beat writer. Uh, Keep going. Melvin Gordon has been a complete no-show during OTAs. If they thought he was the starter, you would have thought he'd make an appearance or two. So some smoke, some fire here. This is how I've felt about this situation. It is. That, You've been very pro-Javante. Like, uh, it's jo uh, Javante Williams is an excellent running back, possesses a true three-down skill set that is, that is pretty rare in the NFL. And – Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon was fine last year. Like he was, he put up decent numbers. Yeah, five a carry. I he think. was good for fantasy, uh, but he's also what going to be twenty eight. I mean, it, Melvin Gordon's towards the end there. And are they just tired of the Melvin Gordon experience there? Like, is there more behind the scenes? Because obviously he had the situation, the arrest. Yes, and obviously, and he got, I believe, no charges were filed. Oh yeah, every, was everything was dropped. Yes, but you know, the team just hasn't seemed like. Mel Melvin's there. They paid for him, but I think this was just one of those. Uh, this is this is a regular situation, right? They go out. They were were not expecting Melvin Gordon to be on the roster a couple of years ago. They had the opportunity to sign him, um, and this they're not going to extend it. The, you know, he's going to be twenty eight um, at the end of this contract. They're not going to sign him to a new contract. So I've I've always seen Javante as the heir apparent to Melvin Gordon, who was just you know on a what was that? A two-year yeah, contract? Yeah, it was a two-year two deal. But the, the previous opinions, Jason, were that Melvin's going to be used for the second of the two years. Do you still believe that to be the I, case? I, yes, I do still expect that to be the case. I mean, the fact that uh, you're calling Melvin, Ryan a liar. I am not calling him a liar. I am saying that you think I think O'Halloran's just O'Halloran. Oh, oh, O'Halloran. My opinions are different than his, and he is far more plugged into the Denver Broncos than I am. But I also think it's one of those things when you're when your job is to write about what's going on in camp right now, and Melvin Gordon is not there right now, and Javante is, the story writes itself. Yeah, it does. All right, um, Jason, you have an opportunity right now to accept the trade offer with this next piece of news. Oh, okay. Um, another Bay Area reporter, Jennifer Lee Chan, reporting that Trey Sermon is, quote, ahead of the curve at OTAs. Um, I would expect that if Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert are active for him to be out there getting an opportunity – that he wouldn't normally have as a rookie. Um, I did I did send you an upgraded trade offer. It's sitting there for you. I saw it, and it was – I apologize. Some trades are just forgettable. And <laughs> that one completely – I saw it, and I was like, oh, I thought I rejected that already. Um, but thank you. Was it James Robinson plus a third rounder now? Something like that. It, uh, James Marvin Ro Jones. Yeah, James Robinson plus Marvin Jones. Oh, man, but you love Marvin Jones. How can you trade him? Exactly. I'm making a sacrifice Jason, for this trade. It will hurt him personally. It, w it won't help your fantasy team, but it will hurt Andy personally to take Marvin Jones away Ooh, from him. Man, T that, that that is tempting. Um, but no, thank you. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Zach Taylor said Joe Mixon will share third down snaps this season. Taylor said having Boo. having Joe Mixon on the field makes us better. Boo. At the same time, you don't need him on the field for 75 snaps a game. I mean, this is like. Yes, you do, Zach Taylor. Take it back. Yeah, no team will do that, really, except for maybe Christian McCaffrey in years past. But uh, I don't know. You want Samaj P. Ryan out there or Joe Mixon on third down? That's what I'm saying, man. So I think we're going to see a lot of Joe Mixon. Uh, I think that'll do it for news today. As always, news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest-growing fantasy platform today. That's what we're doing our mock draft on. 
sleeper. Momentarily? Yes. All right, let's uh let's get it going. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Yeah. There was a bit of uh, hey, John New Smith news. He didn't finish practice today with a hamstring injury. It was, quote, a rain-soaked practice. What are you doing? Why are you out there in the rain? Uh, it's a, it's a singing? I mean, that just seems like a thing. To, that's where I prefer to hurt my hamstring. In the, out in the rain? Like in a rain-soaked practice. That seems like a good place to hurt yourself. Yeah. San Francisco wishes it would rain more in San Francisco. Whatever right? they're doing. Yeah. Different weather. All right, as I said before, Jason is at the two spot. Mike's at the four. I'm at the five. We're going head-to-head in this one. It's a 12-team league. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, a defense, and five bench spots. And But, but Andy. Oh. Yes. What about the kickers? What about them? They're losers. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, public opinion. Your so, voice I, look, changed. Look. That was rapid puberty. I, uh, some of my favorite players in the NFL are kickers, but for fantasy, that's just dumb. That's just – we don't need to play with kickers in fantasy. You don't fantasy. need to be so, like, extreme about this. I, you can have a preference, and other people can have their own preference. Yeah, but I love an extreme preference, <laughs> and so – You want to make other people feel bad. I want to make other people feel better. I want them to have more fun in their fantasy leagues by getting rid of I mean, the what most do you say to a Nuggets fan right now? Oh, <laughs> eat it. Sons uh, and four. Yes, yeah, sons oh. and four. <laughs> that, that's what we say. Oh, no. Oh, sons man. and four. Aren't you impressed that it's been 16 <laughs> minutes and I that was the first time I brought it up? Uh, to be fair, I had to hold everything back at the beginning of the show when I had the fourth pick. Well, I almost, I almost <laughs> just started with a welcome <laughs> to the Western Conference Finals. But All right, Jason, you're on the clock. The number one pick. Was, I wonder who it's going to take. It was Christian McCaffrey. Oh, Boo. I thought for sure he was going to fall to me. You thought it would be Melvin Gordon at 101? Um, the nice thing here is that there are there are a clear two players at the top of every draft. So if Christian McCaffrey is gone, I will take the other one, and it's uh, Dalvin Cook. Not a lot to discuss there. They are great. Move on. Alvin Kamara win it, uh, 103. And, Mike, you are now on the clock with your choice of – Derrick Henry? Yeah. I will okay. take him. Interesting. I will take Derrick. I mean, the, at this point of the, the draft, I'm just, you know, I'm sticking with my projections for now, and, and those are my f top four running backs. The It would have gotten uh, more interesting if, if, say, I was in, like, Andy's position here yeah. because because I, no, have, no. I have Nick Chubb projected higher than Saquon Barkley, and that's – I have like, another running back projected higher than Saquon. And it's an extremely mm. difficult thing when you're finally like you're it's easy when you're looking at your projections like, yeah, I could totally defend this and blah, blah, blah. And then once you're on the clock, you're like, man, that Saquon Barkley guy's really good at football and he's going to catch a lot of passes. I'm going to stick with my rankings here. Yes, uh, I, I love it. I'm not going to be a slave to two years ago. I think Saquon is a great player. The pass catching sets him apart. But the guy I'm going to take is ranked one spot ahead of him. It's not, Whoa. It's, it's not Nick Chubb. Whoa. It's Jonathan Taylor. That's hot. That's spicy. So, I, of course, in our mock draft, we end up in a position where in the first round, I have to stick to my guns on that one. But uh, the way I have it projected out, Jonathan Taylor, year two, I think a great football team. It's not how I project the Giants to, to finish the season as a great football team. Could go through some quarterback controversy coming off the injury. Won't be 100% week one. That's another, you know, uh, opinion out there. So I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor. He he has more fantasy points in my half-point projections. And there's our first three picks. Devontae Adams went at number six, then Saquon. So Saquon drops to seven here. We have a show coming up soon that we'll be talking a little bit more in depth about Saquon Barkley and his outlook. Uh, a little, little teaser. And then uh, you have... Aaron Jones next, Tyreek Hill, Zeke, Nick Chubb, and then Kelsey did go at 112. I had some dreams that he may fall all the way into oh, the second round. I've seen me. him going in the middle of the second in several mocks, but this this feels more like what's going to happen on That's what in, I would in do. your actual draft day parties this year. Yeah, and then DeAndre Hopkins, Stephon Diggs start the second round. Mixon, Jefferson, Eckler, Brown, Metcalf. And I am back on the clock. 
Uh, I see that Mike's champion is sitting here, Antonio Gibson. Yes, he is. If I wanted to go combo running backs, uh, I'm not quite as high on Gibson as you two gentlemen are, although I am very bullish. Um, but I'm going to make what I think is the right pick uh, for my team. Stands out to me as the right pick here. And I'm going to take Calvin Ridley in, no! the, in the second round. Oh, boo. Uh, one of the few run, uh, wide receivers that has 101 overall potential. And I get him with the eighth pick of the second round. And Mike is discouraged and disappointed. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that was your pick, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, that, was an, that was an immediate auto pick. Uh, like, Calvin Ridley's my dude. Let me tell you, I did a quick mock draft where I was at the two after these uh, random spots were given, and in that mock draft, I was able to get Calvin Ridley with my pick, and then when I looked at where you two were, I was like, that's never happening. Yeah. He will never get back to me because one of you two will definitely grab him. All right, so looking at the wide receivers left, we have uh, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Allen Robinson, Mike Evans, Terry McLaurin. I mean, like a lot of... Julio. Yeah, Julio is there, but Julio is much lower in my projections for me, so he's did not really see, in consideration. Did you see the guy who bought the custom Falcons jersey? No. With number 11, and it said Julio, W-H-O, <laughs> on the back <laughs> oh. to wear to the games. Oh, no. Hey, some people deal with their sadness yeah. in different ways. you got, you got to do what you got to do. But at, at this point, I mean, I do have Michael Thomas at wide receiver six, so that, that I'm not opposed to that pick, but you have – building your team you have fun you have the your guys that are just your guys and i ah! have i have antonio gibson <laughs> it's I'm, oh i'm have, not mad at you i'm no, mad at I know. team three mike took antonio gibson and i knew who jason's next pick yes. was going to be and now it cannot be him <sighs> i think your quote just now mike was when you have your guys you have your guys yes Cam Akers went right after Antonio Gibson. That was Jason's guy. Team three has it out for you. Oh, man. Team um, three, you, you are the worst. And so I, I'm sorry. Dalvin Cook, you have Dalvin Cook. I've got Dalvin Cook. But you I don't, don't have Cam Akers. Well, right. what's funny is when Andy got to the clock, I thought to myself, there are three players I really, really like, and I'll be stoked if I can get Calvin Ridley, Cam Akers, or Antonio Gibson, I cannot. So, Mike, why don't why don't you take it from here and I'll so I'll let you think about it. Thank we'll let you. you stew in your tilt for a little bit while we thank <laughs> today's sponsor, Manscaped. Father's Day is just around the corner. You can grab a gift uh, for for your pops. Grab a gift for yourself. I mean, it's it's Father's Day. Take care of yourself. But Manscaped, it is the best body hair trimmer on the market and now they don't stop at manscaped these people are out of control oh no they had the best trimmer at 1.0 2.0 3.0 and now we are up to 4.0 their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology you got like you got the the travel lock you got a 4000k led spotlight you could turn on and off look maybe you're mm -hmm. i don't maybe you're spelunking I don't know, and you you, you got to do so. You got a pit stop here and take care of some body grooming. You're kind of always spelunking when you're. <laughs> oh, no. is, to be fair, that is very accurate. And you can check out uh, the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer because you got to get that stuff out of here. They got cologne. They got uh, look. They got deodorants. It's manscaped. They have things for all of your grooming needs. And check this out. Get twenty percent off plus free shipping with the code Footballers at Manscaped.com. Get your dad a gift. You know they will use. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. And Foot Clan, if you have ever wanted to learn how to box or kickbox from real fighters pow, pow, pow. And, and actually have exercise that is enjoyable Sons and, four. and awesome, it, that's fight <laughs> camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our, our man's he, been trained. You want, I'll, bet he, I'll bet he's fight camping. Uh, fight camp brings boxing and kickboxing gym right into your home. Full body workouts that you'll actually look forward to. It comes with a free standing punching bag that can take your absolute hardest hits. And it's made for beginners all the way to experienced boxers who want to box from home with new content being released every single week from easy to advanced. It comes with all the gear you need. It's got the boxing gloves, the freestanding punching bag, the quick hand wraps, plus all the punch tracking sensors. So you want to you go on a leaderboard, you want to see how hard you're hitting? 
I I mean that that's where I'm at. You're on the leaderboard. I'm sure I'm number one. I have to you, be. I hit oh, so you, hard. You're so fast. You can learn from six highly qualified trainers, all with real fight experience, and their tech teaches you how to punch, measures your speed and volume. You can pay for your fight camp over 24 months for less than the cost of a boxing gym and get it right away. Plus, Fight Camp offers free shipping with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get free shipping on Fight Camp. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Once again, joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. And now I know where I'm going. You gave me enough time, Mike. Excellent. I'm uh, recalibrating, and I'm going to take the running back. There's, a, there's several good wide receivers here. But running back, when I look at tier-based drafting, there's kind of a guy left that I have right next to Antonio Gibson. Oh, no. Um, it's not going to be who I think you're oh, after. Okay. But I still believe um, in Clyde Edwards Alaire. I think that he is. I don't mind it. He's going to get enough work on a great offense uh, in that a Andy Reid system. So I'm not worried. So you went Clyde, and I think it's illustrative to have you go. You know, you're the 102, you had Cook. But then you see, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you see the long wait in a 12-team league, and you had to go through the ups and downs of losing Ridley, Gibson, Akers, who you really wanted because you're at the top of the draft. You end up with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Kittle goes at 212. I was kind of curious if he'd still be sitting on the board for us in the third round for some tough decisions. Keenan Allen goes with the first pick of the third, and then you're back on the clock, Jay. And the wide receiver I would have taken uh, if I didn't go running back uh, is still there. And I will say this. I would be tempted here personally uh, to go after Najee Harris um, because I think the value is there in, in the third round. Uh, I, I personally think that. But because I'm near a turn and it is so long to yeah. come back to me, I, I want to get a wide receiver. And when Michael Thomas is there, uh, I think he's as safe as it comes to get him in the third round as my wide receiver one. I'm I'm super happy to start oh, Dalvin man. Cook, Clyde Edwards Alaire, and Michael Thomas. Yeah, that's uh unfortunate for us. Patrick Mahomes at three oh three off the board. I doubt he would have tempted Mike here no, at three oh four. He, he would not. Uh but now what do you do? So I am double running back. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Look, man, I I wasn't planning on starting a super robust running back team over here. Uh, it's very very difficult right now because I was I was playing the game with Najee Harris a little bit where where his ADP is because I have him at ten and I have Gibson at eleven. Uh, but knowing that uh, you could have gone Michael Thomas and came back around to Najee in hindsight. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I could, that's something I could have done in hindsight. Um. But it was just knowing that Najee, of the guys, is most likely to make it back uh, of my rankings versus his ADP. But oh, it, it, the, the thought of starting with those three running backs is very, very, very tempting. Uh, the potential of having you know three workhorse-type running backs. If they all hit, do it. If they all hit, that would be a devastating team. But I'm going to stick with my 2021 brand here. No, this is not being a chicken. I'm sticking with, with my, my stick here. TMC? I am taking the walrus because oh. I want I want one of those three dudes on my team. Man, I it it's not going to feel – when the wide receivers come back, they're still going to be good players. There won't be elite tier, and it will feel rough in the draft process, but you just got to namaste and breathe through that. And once you get to week one and you look at your actual starting lineup versus who you are playing, you go, oh, yeah, Darren Waller, a wide receiver in my tight end spot. Who am I playing against? Logan Thomas? Excellent. Well, you have been comfortable with this strategy all offseason of making sure your team has one of those top guys, assuming you don't overpay, and Waller's here in the middle of the third. Yeah, so, I love it. So you have Derrick Henry, Antonio Gibson, Darren Waller, uh, you know, strategically the way I'm looking at this, I am at 305. I've got a long wait until the 408. And I'm looking at the tiers and I'm looking at the wide receivers that are on the board. Allen Robinson, Terry McLaurin, uh, Julio Godwin, uh, Amari Cooper still there who I really like. There are a lot of wide receivers that I'm comfortable with. I certainly will get, an, get one in the fourth that I'm comfortable with. The running backs, they start to get a little bit shaky. Um, and so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to bypass the J.K. Dobbins here. I'm going to bypass the DeAndre Swift. 
Ooh. And I'm going to bypass the... Uh, oh, are you getting pl- out some Nachi? Platoon of Miles You're Sanders. Nachi? Are you drafting yeah. Nachi? Andy drafted yeah. Nachi. Andy yeah. drafted Nachi. Oh, I yeah. I regret it immediately. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. Good for you. You did that's, a good thing. That is would have easily been my pick there as well. I figured uh, if you had gone Nachi there, I might have... I think I would have gone wide out, and then I would have gambled that Josh Jacobs made it back around to me. Mm. Um. Robinson went next, then Sanders, Swift, McLaurin, Dobbins, Julio, 311, Julio. Carson, Evans, Godwin, Ed, Evans, Godwin, back-to-back. Back. I had kind of hoped Godwin would make it all the way back to me, too. Cooper, Thielen, Woods, a lot of wideouts went off the board, so maybe I'll eat my words. David Montgomery and Josh Allen. So, ironically, Josh Jacobs is sitting here. So yep. I, I could have gone uh, the other wideout. You got Galladay, you got CeeDee Lamb, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson. You've got a short wait for the next round. Um, I'm actually going to go back to the running back well. I will take Josh Jacobs here. Wow. So I'm okay. going to have Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs. If it's a slower start to the season for Najee, you know, getting Josh Jacobs in the fourth round just shows what has happened. This was a first, end of first type of player last year. Goes out and puts up a number eight overall season. The signing of Kenyon Drake. And some of the fantasy burns, and now he's a middle fourth to late fourth guy. Um, but he has the potential to compete for for you know the most touches in football. So I'm going to take him there and hand it over to Mike. Uh, and so at this point, I mean, we are – I don't mind the Jacobs pick there, but we are full in to a, the running back dead zone where I do not want to draft – any of these running backs, even though you could see the pack. Like, That's one of the reasons I took him there because yeah, I think the rest of the like, guys on the board are Miles, scary. Miles Gaskin. Yeah, I could talk myself into the story of, of Miles Gaskin being <laughs> great for fantasy. Like, to it, the 30 for 30? Yeah, like I could I can talk myself into that. ETN, Edmonds, Melvin Gordon, not so much. But yeah, there's, these are guys that you're trying to tell yourself, you know, you, you're, just, you're giving yourself affirmations in the mirror after you select them. As opposed to drafting other players that are available that you are confident are yes, good. Yes, exactly. So, uh, he this it's a little chalky because he's sitting here at the top of the wide receivers for ADP and sleeper. But I have him ranked as a as Jason. I'm, you know who I'm taking. I, I know him. who you're taking. I'm okay. just so I'm worried about Team Three, man. Oh, that, team that Three, stupid got Team you. Three. Uh, I have him. I have him ranked as a, a top twelve wide receiver. I think with the money and his ability, they're going to just feed him so many targets. So I'm going to take Kenny Galladay. So he's your wide receiver one, Kenny G wide receiver one. Do you need some inspiration? Oh, smooth me up. Oh man, Kenny G. So. so oh, there it is. I was tempted to submarine you. I I was I was building up for the bad drop, Andy. I was trying to. Trying to raise you up so you can I mean, look, take him out at the knees. He's drafting Najee. He's playing the real smooth, and now he can't even turn it off. No, I can turn it off. Oh. I just couldn't find the bad, the bad Kenny G. I had my people take that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so DJ Moore went after Kenny Galladay, which I'm happy he went because there's a player that I really wanted to draft here, and I would have been hard pressed to take him over DJ Moore. I'm a believer in uh, DJ Moore. I still think he's going to be great, but the way my team is developing with Michael Thomas already there. I want the fireworks show. I want the potential for the crazy breakout. And I love having, yeah, I've got Dalvin Cook and Clyde Edwards Alaire. So having Michael Thomas as my one allows me to have CeeDee Lamb like it. as the two. And, and you know, I, I could see both of those players being top 15 wide receivers. So I'm very happy with this start. Love <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> why, why, is, why is love hurting? Why? What are we doing? What uh, is this clown show? I don't know. Love scars, Mike. All right. Maybe I'm trying to tempt Jason to take Jalen Hurts in the fifth. Are you, um, are you tempted now? I So you are actually kind of speaking my love language. This was part of my plan. Um, I said to myself, I'm going to try this. This is a mock draft. I want to see what happens. I'm a late round quarterback drafter. But my number one quarterback, who I think is going to be the number oh, one quarterback, yeah, a, is here in the pick. fifth round. I am solid at running back. I'm solid at wide receiver. So I'm going to go take Kyler Murray in the fifth and see if I feel like my depth team three takes a, a hit or not. And, uh, man, team three, sometimes I love him, sometimes I hit him. Just depends on the direction. That was the pick I wanted, too. 
Uh, Deontay Johnson goes next after Kyler Murray. Jason Dang it, man. starts with Cook, Edwards Alaire, Thomas, Lamb, and Murray. Deontay Johnson goes to team three. Mike, you're back on the board. Yeah, Hen I mean, Henry Gibson, Waller, Galladay, and some choices. I was really hoping to get Deontay on the way back there for that, uh, what I believe is a guaranteed volume. I, like For what I'm doing with Kenny Galladay, I'm projecting. But Deontay, if he's on the field and Big Ben's on the field, you know that he's going to get a whole bunch of targets. So I'm look the wide receivers at this point, Tyler Lockett, Brandon Ayuk, Odell Beckham. I mean, you're in a you're in a definitely in a different tier of wide receiver here. You can go Jamar Chase and hope so, for that rookie breakout. Yeah, that Jamar Chase is uh he, he is definitely high on my board uh it, between him and Tyler Lockett, but do I want to go do I want to go with Lockett and Galladay and have these two where the archetype has been, you know, very hot, very cold type of players. And I'm not, I'm not sure I want to do that or take the risk on Jamar chase, but it, 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 or, you know, if I was going to take a quarterback here, I would be looking at Lamar Jackson. Um, it's, it's wild that Lamar. You know, Is this it was, how it's going to be? Mahomes, Allen, Murray. I, I I think so. I, I hope that's so. How I, that's why I think it's going to be mixed up that that Lamar is going to be available for people in these middle rounds. And there's I, a lot of it. upside to Lamar this year. That's I get. He was it was rough for the first half, but just the second half, he reminded people of what he can do and it's <sighs> win your league. I mean, it wasn't. It, people just need to value appropriately the weapons that he has. Adding Rashad Bateman and adding, yes, he just turned 28 today, but adding the Lizard King, Sammy Watkins, having a couple more competent wide receiver options on this team goes a long ways. You cannot – everyone can make fun of Lamar's passing or the, the lack of effectiveness or up and down, but, like, you know, Willie Sneed does not solve all of your problems. That's true. So That's I think true. It's he a, does not. It's a balance. So you want him to pick his spots. And when you have J.K. Dobbins and you can play action pass – and you have the threat of the legs, and you get one-on-one -on -one with Rashad Bateman and Sammy Watkins, Like you just need him to exploit some situation. And I, I think the value is fine in the fifth if you want to take that stab at getting old Lamar Jackson back. You uh, have a different situation, though, because you yeah. spent an early pick on a tight end. And, Foot Clan, if you want to go after an early quarterback or you want to go after an early tight end, is you know assuming you're in those single quarterback, single tight end leagues, you probably want to – be aware that you don't want to do both in the early rounds because your running back wide receiver depth will be very shaky. It'll be shook. It would not have bothered me uh, at that point to go Lamar Jackson just because of his – representing top three of I – th I think that's a – it's a pretty safe projection to say that Lamar will be a QB4 at the very worst, and he'll give you spike weeks. But in the end, I went with – my team will be team variance, team upside. I went with Tyler Lockett. <laughs> With Love Kenny it. Galladay. I actually really wanted Lockett there. Uh, I felt like with Taylor, Harris, and Jacobs, and then Ridley being the backbone of the wide receiver core, like somebody like yeah. Lockett yeah, that been perfect at the two you. spot is perfect. Uh, you took him ahead of me. You sniped him. And so I went with another player that I think will have some up and downs, uh, ups and downs, but at the same time, um, I believe it'll be a breakout season from the get-go, a la Justin Jefferson-esque. Uh, I went with Jamar Chase in the fifth round. Yep. Most upside at the wide receiver position I could find right now, just to let you know who I choose him, chose him over. It, you know, it was T Higgins. It was, it was uh DJ Chark. It was Juju. It was Will Fuller. Um, there are some players I like Debo, you know, is still on the clock for me here coming back around to the sixth round, but chase is the most upside and opportunity. And I can find stability at the position later on in the draft. So, I took Chase, and then it went Hunt, Hawkinson, Ayuk, Beckham, Lamar finally did go, Mike, with the 10th pick of the fifth round, Mostert, Melvin Gordon, Edmonds, Prescott, Andrews, ETN, Aaron Rodgers, Sutton, and David Johnson. Okay, so we got half the league here that, w that have their quarterback one? Yep, we have uh, six quarterbacks off the board so far, five tight ends off the board with Hawkinson and Andrews going. So I guess I had some hope that Andrews would slide around to the sixth here. Didn't happen. Uh, I've got two wide receivers. I've got three running backs. Some running backs. Uh, Ronald Jones here in the sixth round. 
okay, I, I'm thinking about him a little bit. Looking at the other options on the board, a lot of the same wide receivers. I'm going to go ahead and go with Debo Samuel here. Okay. Um, I'm going to add him as my third wide receiver, and I know when he's healthy, he's effective. So I'm going to add him to that team and hope he can stay healthy. All right. And look, man, we're, we're going to be uh, – if you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to keep going with that one. Uh, I'm going to take my fan, one of my fantasy wild cards here. I'm going for upside, baby, at the 6.9. Going nice. Chase Claypool. Very nice. Um, yeah, I was, I was eyeballing Chase Claypool. He would have been the wide receiver that I took at this spot. Um, however, when I'm looking, you know, I've still only got two running backs, two wide receivers, the quarterback. Um, so I can go, I can go either running back or wide receiver. I could potentially look at, um, a tight end, but I, I won't hear now that Hawkinson and Mark Andrews are off the board. I will probably punt the position, go a little later. Troutman. Got it. Uh, sure. We'll see how far maybe if Dallas Goddard came back, but the reality is to me, when I'm looking at these running backs, I don't like Ronald Jones. Uh, we talked about Damian Harris earlier. Uh, James Robinson. There's just so many question marks to all these guys. There is one player out there that I think, for better or worse, he's got the workload and he's going to get a lot yeah. of run. And it's Mike Davis, and he's it at, for me when I look at running back. So I'm taking Mike Davis because the wide receiver that I want, if he goes off the board, which he did not, um, I I could have pivoted. I I'm I like Robbie Anderson. I think Robbie Anderson is a very good wide receiver. Um, I believe in the coaching staff that is in Carolina. While I don't love Sam Darnold, Rob, Robbie was good last year and he didn't score touchdowns. So uh, I'm really loving the way my team sh is shaping out, and I wish this was a real league. All right. Damien Harris right after you. Mike back on the clock. Three straight wide receivers, Mike. Galladay, Lockett, Claypool. Man. Those are three very wild card wide receivers. Absolutely. But you have a very strong foundation with Henry Gibson Waller. Yeah, Waller. Are you, what Waller are you thinking is, about right now? What's going through that head of yours? That big, gigantic head of yours. Well, a lot of thoughts <laughs> due to the size. Right. They, I mean, like to, to get from one side to the other. That's uh, that's a that's, continental trip, my friend, <laughs> as they say across the neurons. Uh, I mean, because this Neural, is a, a Neuralink implant would cost a lot more for you. Is <laughs> oh, that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I have to get a baker's dozen <laughs> put in there just just to be effective. Uh, this is what I'm, I'm saying. I'm sorry, sir. We cannot help you. <laughs> you cannot be helped. You cannot link these two sides. Uh, where drafting Darren Waller there, you, I didn't have a wide receiver one, but Darren Waller is effectively my wide receiver one. And so as long as you can get into that headspace, it does, it, it helps you out real. So you can actually look at what your team really is. It's not just a tight end there. You're, it's a, it's a player who will lead his team in targets or who at least he should. So wide receivers left. Uh, you know, I don't mind Juju right here, but I'm not going to double up. You know, I, I, I got one wild card on the Steelers. I'm not going to put all of my money on the return of Big Ben and his arm. Uh, Tyler Boyd, he's the one to me that takes the biggest hit from the addition of Jamar Chase. Brandon Cooks, it would make Jason very sad if I were to take Brandon Cooks and he didn't get back I, to I you. I have cooled on Brandon Cooks quite a bit. Um, I Have you? I, I have, because when I initially did my stats, I realized that he is the only guy there. He's always been good, and I think he will get a lot of targets, and he'll be fine. But the 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 reality is they're, the, the Houston Texans are not going to score a lot of points. So they're even not if they're coming down, from Deshaun Watson. It, even if they're down and you go, oh, they're going to have to throw the ball, it's like, well, how many points do you think they score at the end of the game? Yeah, ex yeah, yeah. 13, exactly. 14? All right, so I'm looking at running. We're in a range where you're just calling your shots on running backs, and there's two that I I have my eye on, and one was featured into the, uh, the the hype train section of the news. But in the seventh round, if our man from Denver was not lying, and I got the starting running back for the Denver Broncos in the seventh, that would be incredible value. So I will take the rookie Javante Williams. So on this draft, Gordon goes five twelve, Javante goes seven oh four. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet here. I am going to attempt to achieve something no one's done before, which is um, to have every single passing yard and passing touchdown for a single team on my roster. I'm going to draft Kyle Pitts in the seventh round. <laughs> I'm taking Kyle okay. Pitts. Uh, I, I don't I don't feel bad about that at all. No, it's a huge upside at the position, and I got to wait a long time for it. 
And I am hoping with seven QBs off the board after I pick that I will come right back to Tom Brady. And uh, Tom Brady is my fourth quarterback, and I got him. So yep. late eighth round Tom Brady. Uh, I'm all about it. 40 touchdowns last year. I haven't projected for over 40 again this season. And Pitts, Brady, seventh and eighth round, feel very good about it. I really like what you just did for your team. I, I was, you know, your team was obviously super questionable to me. Right, um, obviously. But the the Pitts and Brady, I, I think that's really, really good value. Again, I'm not as convinced that Pitts will hit his rookie season, but uh, you're, you're not, you know, when you're talking about a seventh rounder, you're not giving up a ton for the chance that he could. And if he does, that's a real difference maker there. Yeah, so that those are my uh, number four tight end on my projections and my number four quarterback yeah, nicely in done. the seventh and eighth round. Back to you, Mike. Nicely done. The other running back I had my eye in, or eye on. Ooh, uh, uh -oh. Hey, oh, hey -oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love my <laughs> oh. uh, Spelunkin. <laughs> There is no light. <laughs> Let there me tell is you, no light. Uh, he, Only darkness. He 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 made it back through the uh, uh, through the gauntlet right there. Uh, I'm going to take the quads. I'm going to take AJ Dillon, who I believe has standalone value in Green Bay. Even so it was the name I just wrote down for the next round pick for me. Oh well, he's so gone. he is gone. But standalone value uh, apparently has nicknamed both of his legs, which. Uh, we have not addressed it on the show, but you can't you can't take both of those nicknames. We've already been calling uh, Saquon Barkley the Quad Father on this show for for many years. So, look, man, you can't. It's it's done. Trademark. If you don't end up, Mike, with either Najee Harris or AJ Dillon on a team of yours, <laughs> do you even want to play that league? I mean, oh no, I, ra done? I rage quit. You rage. I, quit I right leave there? the draft out of here. Yep. Okay, so Jason, right on the clock here. Tyler Boyd went after AJ Dillon. Um, I don't think I read off the draft picks after Kyle Pitts, but like James Robinson, it was a highlight there. Seven Oh six, take a shot on him. Sure. Fournette seven eleven. Jalen hurts went at seven twelve. um, ahead of Brady. It's also worth noting Dallas Goddard. Noah Fant uh, went off the board. I, I probably would have been looking at tight end with those guys gone. And this is something when you're doing your draft, if the tier of tight end that you believe in is gone, don't just be there. Like I'm in the, I'm at the eighth and I'm like, Oh no. Like, all the tight ends that I really like are gone. So don't just draft a crappy one. If you're going to draft a crappy one, draft it late. You know, don't sure. don't just be like, oh, everybody's got them. It, you know, people are going to stop drafting them eventually. Um, I'm looking at a two-pack of wide receivers here. There's one that I really want that I'm confident is going to come back to me because there's only two picks away. Um, so if I were to grab that player, um, I was between Curtis Samuel and Jerry Judy. Okay, that's that's okay. where I was trying to decide. He's already been named a best friend of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, yes, Curtis Samuel. Yeah. He's uh, first name basis. Oh, I thought right him now. and Jerry Judy were close. Oh. Close. <laughs> um, but instead of Jerry Judy, uh, Andy, you got Jamar Chase in the fifth round. In the ninth round, I'm going to get the actual. Um, oh, look at this rookie guy. number one wide receiver, and I'm going to take Devonte Smith. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was the next. Uh, off the board for me, no question. You guys have stolen Dylan and Smith. Nice on this quick go turn. back to so your board. Hollywood, I'm surprised you didn't take him, but Hollywood went next. Mike, you're back on the clock. Your last five picks: Galladay, Lockett, Claypool, Javante Williams, and AJ Dylan. Who are you taking? So if my calculations are correct, <laughs> thank you. Uh, it appears that Team Nine is the only other team that does not have a quarterback, uh, and we are at the, the, the remaining guys are Burrow. Stafford, is Tannehill Tann gone. Tannehill is still there. That was okay. where I was going to get to. Matt Ryan, Baker. So you're at like, you're at lower tier type of guys. Except Ryan Tannehill is still on the board. Ryan Tannehill is inside of my top ten of my season long projections. So to have waited this long, I'm not going to dance with Team. You don't want to dance with Team Nine? Oh uh, no, Team Nine, not a good dancing partner. This one, this is takes one to tango. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Drafting Ryan Tannehill, dude. I, I, I was, I love my team right now, and I'm happy that I took Kyler in the fifth. But your two picks of quarterback prove the point why I, you don't need to, you don't, you Tom Brady in the eighth and Ryan Tannehill in the ninth allowed you to get better running backs, better wide receivers. Whereas I took Kyler Murray 
uh, in the fifth. And and I think it worked out well, but, man, I love your two quarterbacks for value. Thank you. All right. Uh, and I don't like complimenting <laughs> either of you. No, you don't. You hate it. I've got three wideouts, Ridley, Chase, and Samuel. I could add some depth here. One of the hard – I don't know if we've ever done a show, Brooks, hardest players to draft. I'm going to take one of them right now. He's the, he's the clear number one on this team, and he's super hard to draft. I don't want to, but I'm taking Corey Davis. Oh, yeah. Middle of the ninth round, Corey Davis is the number one Probably. for a rookie that likes to throw the football. And um, so I'm going to take the shot of adding a little bit of depth there. But, I, I mean, uh, the reason is – He's he's had a chance to be a number one wide receiver. He was a number one wide receiver for several years, and then he excelled once he finally became the two. And now he has a rookie throwing him the ball. So that's that, that's why it's so hard. Depth chart number one, Mike. That's all yeah. that matters. Depth chart number one. Well, I get it. Uh, and also players get better over time. And I think he got better than when he started in this league. All right. Uh, I was taking a gamble. There were two players I wanted at that spot. I wanted Corey Davis. I wanted the Gus Bus. Oh. The Gus Bus waited. He did not go. Beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> and so I'm taking the Gus Bus here in the 10th round. You know, people talk about the efficiency of J.K. Dobbins in that offense. Gus Edwards is just as efficient in that offense. They just gave him an extension. You know, what, what was the price for J.K. Dobbins in this draft? Third round pick. I get Gus with basically an end of the 10th round pick. Um, and, and part of that is, look, if one of those guys goes down, that other player is going to have a real opportunity each and every week. They'll probably share the load right now, but at least I know it's somebody I can play that will get points. And we're talking 10th round here. There's only three picks left. So I'm feeling, feeling pretty good with Gus Bus in the 10th. All right, excellent. I had a, a wide receiver I had my eye on. Uh, perennial all-star. Was a fantasy football league winner for many years. I mean, he got to his team, you know, halfway through the season. It took him some time to acclimate, but then over those final three weeks of the of the season, was a top ten guy twice, scored three straight games, and he's playing with a quarterback who Andy is projecting will easily throw over forty touchdowns in the back of the tenth round. This is where we have landed in twenty twenty one. I will draft Antonio Brown. Which is absurd to say Antonio Brown in the back of the 10th round. Yeah, it, it is, and he was pretty solid, man. He, he was not a bad player last year. Um, I think that is good value. I'm Full just, off season now? I mean, it's like Antonio Brown has the room to, when you, to be much, much better. When you were watching him on the field, you weren't like, oh, wow, he's, he's definitely lost something. You're like, no, he's still good. All right, I am uh, I am up right now. I'm looking at a couple of different running backs. There you was, got two picks pretty quick. There was one that I really wanted to get back to me, and I'm not going to take him here because I don't think – I think he'll be available in two more picks, whereas Jamal Williams, I believe, would have gone. So I'm playing the gamble. Okay. I, pay, I played, and I won, and I'm taking Jamal Williams and Michael Carter. Dang it. Yeah, he won't get back to you um, in the uh, the tenth and eleventh round. So if I look at my team, I realize I'm the best. So that's great job <laughs> drafting, Jason. Um, and it's to you, Mike. Congratulations. That is Thank the you. normal post draft um, talk <laughs> that fantasy players give. To yeah, well, it's one of two, right? Like you either leave the draft feeling great, or you're like, "What have I done?" We have three picks left. One of them is going to be a defense. So really, two positional picks left, Mike. So we're back on the clock. Look, man, we're, we are in. And I will cross Michael Carter's name off of this list. We are that in. I had right there. <laughs> we're, we're in just sleeper town now uh, where you're just trying to find the upside. And well, let, let me make a point here while you, okay. while you think about that. This is the zone, too, where, at least for me personally, I like taking players that I am going to see evidence of whether I'm right or wrong on that sleeper choice early in the season. If I take somebody here, like, let me give you an example. Like, if you took Rashad Penny, like, you're probably not going to really know whether he's integrated that and is, important. That is correct. And you'll just cut him after week one for a waiver pick. So I like taking players that I'm going to see. Not that you have to, obviously, but for me personally, I like taking players that I'm going to see evidence of really early. No, I I, I like that strategy. And, and generally speaking, I, I would. I don't know that this is a player that you're going to know week one or not. But we know that this player has hit 1,000 yards. We know that he has hit 10 touchdowns, but he has not put them together into one season. The man who 
gives ne'er a worry or a concern for his body oh, or well-being. But I'm going to take Mike Williams. I'll take the wide receiver, too, with Hunter Henry out of town, it, it tied to one of the one of the good young quarterbacks. If, if Herbert gets any better, man, Mike Williams, it, it can happen. It, Absolutely. It, it can happen. I think Mike Williams is one of my absolute favorite late-round picks right now. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy that we haven't talked about a lot on the show, but I truly believe in the skill and ability of um, – I think the team is ready to give him a solid hold of the number two spot in this offense. The quarterback situation, I think, has improved, and uh, depending on who gets a start, has improved greatly. And I'm going to take a sleeper pick of mine, Darnell Mooney, wide okay. receiver for the okay. Chicago Bears here. You better be uh, crossing your fingers for a little Justin Fields action. I think Mooney has a really, really bright future. This is a uh, franchise year for... Allen Robinson, not that he won't get extended, but Mooney is an elite talent that I had to watch sadly break free deep by 10 yards from the defender and still not have the ball drop anywhere near him over and over last year. He is a big play guy. He is somebody that could come out week one and be that secret waiver wire pickup. So I'm going to take my shot there. And coming back around to the final round, I'm also going to take Nelson Aguilar here. Uh, he's the number one on New England. If it's Mac Jones. That's what we can say. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, if you look at those, two of my last four picks are depth chart number ones. I want to see what happens in these new offenses with Corey Davis and Nelson Aguilar because maybe you find some diamonds in the rough late. And so that's going to wrap up my positional players there. That would, what you can say for Nelson Aguilar, at least, is he is the number one, is the team immediately went to get Nelson Aguilar. Right, as soon as free agency hit, like he was one other of, than Galladay, he got paid the most, right? Yeah, I he, I think that is correct, and it was it was immediately. I mean, he was what he was clearly a priority signing. Now, I mean, they prioritized two tight ends a, as well, but wide receiver wise, I, I like the play. So here for my final position pick, uh, we are it's June, so we we're, we're way early in the process. We have no idea, and generally speaking, I don't like to draft two quarterbacks in a single what? quarterback league. But when you have a player, when you have special talent players available, uh, like Trey Lance, who should he become the starter week one, Trey, Lance, Trey Lance has 1,000-yard rushing upside. Trey Final Lance. positional pick and then let the depth chart play out in San Francisco. That's the plan? Yes. And it could be because if Trey Lance is the starter week one, Trey Lance will be a top 12 There's nothing wrong with that. that. All you're doing is pre-signing him off the waiver wire. Exactly. Um, and if you find out that it's Jimmy G, then you can cut him um, and move on and pick up one of the 50 guys that we're not drafting. But it reminds me of the couple years ago when it, Lamar Jackson was coming into his second year. You had Josh Allen, and it was, what, it, what are these guys actually? And in several leagues, because I've – I didn't fully believe that both of those players could hit, but they were guys I was drafting just with my last positional pick as a second quarterback to say, what if, what if he does hit? What if that, what if everything comes through and clearly those guys hit in a big way? And you can ask the same exact question here for Trey Lance, for Justin Fields. What if it hits? What if they're starting week one and they're running for a thousand yards? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, mobile quarterbacks will usually end up in the top 12. So it's not a bad last positional pick. Now, my last positional pick was last round. I'm defense and tight end. That's what I have to have. And unfortunately, Evan Ingram, Gronk, Austin Hooper, the, Tyler Higby, these guys went. So I'm going to take the first defense off the board, which is the Rams. Um, and then with my very last pick, I'm going to pick up a guy uh, at tight end who is either old busted and won't be able to do anything, <laughs> and he's washed, or... He's inheriting Hunter Henry's role with a great, you know, you talk about Mike Williams with, uh, you know, Justin Herbert throwing on the ball, and I'm going to grab Jared Kuke in the last round. When you said he's either old busted or You thought he's I was not, going Zach Ertz? No, I, well, let's see, there's so many names <laughs> that could have filled in there. There is no weather. But Jimmy Graham is still on that roster and led oh, the tight ends and touchdowns last year. Yeah, that's Colt Komet's job. Or had, uh, he had a lot, right? How many touchdowns did he have last year, Jimmy Graham? I think he had... Six more than he should have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I Well, I, I just wanted you to draft him somehow. All right. So that is going to do it. Mike, why don't you run through your team real quick? 
All right, my final team. I Derrick Henry, Antonio Gibson, Javante Williams, A.J. Dillon are my running backs. Uh, I have Kenny Galladay, his smooth routes, Tyler Lockett, Chase Claypool, Antonio Brown, and Mike Williams are my wide receivers. I got Darren, I am the walrus, holding down my true wide receiver one position, a.k.a. my tight end position. And then I got Ryan Tannehill as my starter, and Trey Lance, just in case. My starting running backs are Dalvin Cook, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Mike Davis, Jamal Williams, and Michael Carter. At wide receiver, I got Michael Thomas, C.D. Lamb, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel, Devontae Smith. And uh, then I've got my quarterback one, the quarterback one, Kyler Murray, to go with Jared Kuk and the Los Angeles Rams. Running back Jonathan Taylor, my first pick, then Najee Harris and Josh Jacobs and Gus Edwards in the backfield. Calvin Ridley, my number one, wide out with Chase, Samuel, Corey Davis, Mooney, and Aguilar. Ended up with Kyle Pitts in the seventh. Tom Brady's my quarterback. Um, let us know what you think of these teams, where you think we went wrong. I have no doubt you will let us know that. And uh, Impossible. The whole draft board, you can see it on YouTube if you want to go and watch it there. I want to thank Sleeper for sponsoring the mock draft. Great platform for mock drafting and experimenting and trying out different uh, situations. Uh, I did not go into this draft planning to draft Kyle Pitts, but when he started dropping, it, it was an opportunity. And that's, oh, hey, that's that's insane value. Like uh, I'll be shocked if people are if you can get Kyle Pitts in the seventh round. Yes, uh, please. Yeah, I, I would, even Jason would draft Kyle Pitts in the seventh round. Yeah, I mean, but I don't think I don't think you're going to. I, think I wanted Kyle him Pitts to go first with his last pick. Get up into <laughs> get up into the fifth round. Uh, we want to also thank friends of the show, pristineauction.com. Travis Kelsey signed NFL football right now. It's up there for $42 at pristineauction.com. It ends Wednesday night. They have a Camara signed full-size on-field helmet for $20 right now. And uh, that ends Wednesday night, two hundreds of auctions every day. Pristineauction.com. Make sure you use the promo code BALLERS. Ooh. That was fun. That was a good draft. Yeah, I think we ended up with three pretty good teams. We're going to put a poll up, right? Yeah, I wonder what Mike's running back depth is going to be. It's Henry Gibson, then it's Williams and Dylan. That's fine with me. All right. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.